Today I'm going to show you how to render orthographic drawing views. Rendering is basically a neat trick for getting some of the information that you need about your different drawing views without having to measure your object and redraw it again and again. So today I'm going to be drawing this little guy. It's just a little stand that I've been using to hold these pilot bits. And I'm not going to draw the bits. I'm going to take them right out. The stand's not too difficult. Uh, fairly simple. I'm going to treat this side here like my front view. That's going to make this my top view and this my right side view. But as you'll see, I'm going to only need to do the bulk of my measurement on my front view and most of the information about my other two views I'm going to get by rendering. So let's speed this up a little bit to see what our front view looks like. So now I'm ready to draw my top view, but some of the information in the top view is already shown in the front view. For example, how long this piece is from one end all the way to the other. That's the same in the top view as it is in the front view. So some information like that I'm able to take right from this view. With a little trick called rendering. What I do is I take my triangle and I line it up with the front view in any place where the information is the same as the top view. And I just drag my little construction lines up. For right now, I'm just going to stick with those four. I want to give myself two inches between drawing views in this drawing. So I line my ruler up with the top of my front view, and I measure up two inches. And that's going to make the bottom line of my top view. Some of the information for the top view I need to measure for the first time. So now I've got my outline of the top view that goes around the very outside, and I've got the outline that goes around the raised up inside, and I only had to measure half of it. I only had to measure the stuff that showed me the depth, because I couldn't see that from my front view. All the information that I could get from the front view, like the spacing between the edges, I brought that up by rendering it. Also making sure that my top view lines up perfectly with my front view. That's how I was able to use my triangle to pull that information straight up, which saved me a bit of measuring. So now I'm going to use the same trick to place the center marks for the four holes. Now that my construction lines are set, I'm going to trace over the ones that I need to keep and make them object lines. So my front view and my top view are done. I had to measure everything about the front view, but I only had to measure about half of the stuff for the top view. It saved me quite a bit of time to be able to pull half of my information straight up from the front view. But I can do this with the right side view too, and as you'll see, it gets even easier. Once again, I'm going to make sure that I've got two inches between my front view and my right side view. It's very important that the distance between the right view and the front be exactly the same as the distance between the top view and the front. Otherwise, this little trick won't work. So now I've got my starting line that's basically going to make up the left side of my right view. I stole this bottom line from over here because it represents the same bottom as the front view. And I also took this line up here that represents this little ledge. I took that over too because we'll see that in the right side view. And I was also able to take over the top line. So there's three lines that I didn't have to measure and mark again. That pretty much shows me everything related to the height of the front view. Everything in the height of the right side view is going to be the same as everything in the height of the front view. So that makes sense to take it from there. But I can also get information about the depth from the top view. It's not quite as simple as sweeping it straight over from the front, but we can take accurate information from the top view and place it in the right side view. All we need to do is to take a 45 degree triangle and line it up with the top right hand corner of this front view. Be careful, we took that top right hand corner out because it was just a construction line. Technically, it's floating out in space and not part of our object. I need to be sure that I'm taking the real right corner of this view. So it should be perfectly in line with the farthest right line and the highest up 
top line. Starting at that corner, I'm going to come up at exactly 45 degrees using my triangle. Almost to the edge of the paper, but not quite. Now I'm going to start taking lines from the top view and pulling them over to the angled line I just made. At each of these points where my construction lines cross the angled line, I use my triangle to bring those lines down to the right view. If I did it right, this front edge should line up exactly with the one that I measured from the front view. And as you can see, it lines up just right. So I'm going to do that with each of the lines that I brought over from the top view. Now I'm only going to keep the lines that I put on here that actually represent the edges of the right side view. There's all my object lines, now I'm going to take my hidden lines and center lines. So I was able to take the information for the right side view straight from the front view without having to measure it over again to draw it over here. I just pulled it straight over. And then I was able to take all the information about the depth of the right side view from the top view by dragging it over here and basically bending it around this 45 degree line and straight down. I didn't have to measure my object one single time to get all this information that I put over here on the right side view. Now to finish this drawing up, I'm just going to erase my construction lines and add some dimensions.